Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I would like to continue on from uh, the last video talking about some of the options that you have for changing the sidebar. Um, first of all, if you want to get rid of the sidebar. Now, I should say that Sugarcube is one of the two main formats that Twine has. The other one is Harlow. Harlow doesn't have a sidebar by default. So if you're just starting, um, you might, rather than sort of get into Sugarcube and then work out how to get rid of the, the sidebar, you might find it easier to just start learning Harlow. Um, if you've been learning Sugarcube for a while, Bear in mind that a lot of the commands in Harlow are different to the ones in Sugarcube that do the same things. Um, basically, it depends on whether the command is from JavaScript or CSS, which is the style sheets, or HTML, which is sort of basic commands for, for laying out a web page, or whether it's a command that's particular to Twine. If it's a command particular to Twine, it will almost always be different between Harlow and um, Sugarcube. So that's something to, to bear in mind. On the other hand, um, the options that I've found for getting rid of the sidebar are only partial. Um, it basically hides the, hides the sidebar, but it doesn't um, change the the indentation of the text. So you have this big sort of blank space. Um, there are uh, commands that I've read that are meant to actually get rid of the sidebar, but they don't work at least on the computer that I'm using. So um, let me show you what I mean. We'll get into this, um, this program. And we'll go to store, uh, sorry, build and play. And as the text says, you can see there is no, there is no sidebar, but there's this great big sort of margin. Um, and in fact, it's indented as much as it would be if the sidebar were there and were the default, the default size. So you're not gaining any space by doing this, and it sort of looks a bit weird because there's this big empty space. So it's really only a, a, a partial solution unfortunately um, but let me show you how I how I did that anyway um, you need to go into style sheet um, and it's and I'll just zoom in to make it a bit easier to see we have hashtag UI dash or minus B A R and a space curly brackets then on a new line Display, D-I-S-P-L-A-Y, colon, space, N-O-N-E, none, um, semicolon. As with uh, other commands in the style sheet, you don't need the semicolon if there's only one command inside a given set of curly brackets, as there is here. But I think it's a good um, practice to just to put it in all the time because it doesn't, it doesn't do any harm to have it there. And then, of course, we end the curly brackets. So it's hashtag UI minus BAR space curly brackets new line T-I-S-P-L-A-Y colon space N-O-N-E semicolon new line and then end the curly brackets. And now I'll show you um, how to set up the sidebar so that it can't be collapsed. By default, there's a um, button on the sidebar, which if you press it will collapse the sidebar, get rid of the sidebar. Um, now, I don't want that in my game because I have in the sidebar the character sheet. I have all the character's attributes and also how much um, of particular resources they have. And I wouldn't want a player to accidentally click the button to collapse that and then sort of not be able to get the sidebar back. So 
Um, let's first see what it looks like. So as you can see, it just looks like the, the normal sidebar, except that somewhere up here, there'd be a button um, which you can click to, to collapse this. And now that button is not there, so the sidebar will always be there. And let's look at how that's done. Again, it's in style sheet. And I'll zoom in again. Very similar um, command, but it's hashtag UI dash BAR. So exactly as before. And then we put dash toggle, T-O-G-G-L-E. And then inside the curly brackets, we have display colon space none, N-O-N-E, with, um, with a semicolon. And that just uh, tells you not to display the, um, the UI bar toggle button. Now, you'll notice that there's some um, other commands underneath. Um, and I'll, what, what that's for is on uh, my PC, but not on the Mac that I'm using to record this video, if you make the screen very, very small, the text will sort of be behind the sidebar. And of course, that's not what you want. Um, so what this, what this uh, set of commands does is it, is it stops that happening. Although, as I say, on this computer, it doesn't do it um, at all. And I, I don't know that I'd bother putting this in, and I'll tell you why. But first, I'll read first. I'll read the um, read the command. It says at media space screen um, and a and d, and then in brackets we've got max dash width colon seven six eight px, which is seven hundred and sixty eight pixels. So basically, what that's saying is if the width of the um, screen becomes seven hundred and sixty eight pixels or less. Um, and if the media is of the type screen, um, I don't know what else it would be, but I tried getting rid of that and it, and it didn't work. So you've got to put at media space screen and max width 768 pixels. And then within the, um, uh, within the curly brackets, we have hashtag story and then another, oops, sorry. And then another set of curly brackets and in the um, inside the second set of curly brackets, um, we have margin dash left colon space nineteen em, um, which is a measure of length. So, so set the margin of the story text to, or the left margin of the story text to nineteen em, rather than sort of hiding it behind the um, behind the sidebar. Um, but as I say, that doesn't it doesn't do that on this Apple computer, um, which is a possible um, example of why it's a good idea to test what your game looks like on particular computers. But um, I wouldn't necessarily put this in, and I haven't put it in on uh, on my game. And the reason is that 768 pixels is very very small you wouldn't you wouldn't get that unless you were using like an antique computer um, or you know a vintage computer I mean not antiques technically but a really old outdated computer or if you were looking at it on a phone and I think my game is not going to really look right on a phone anyway um, I think there's too many elements and they're, they're, they're slightly too big um, that it's it's going to be a bit of a jumbled mess anyway, and I, I don't think it's worth trying to make it phone friendly. I think if I I think if I wanted to make a version for phones, I, I would do that. I would I would make a separate version um, which played the same but which displayed displayed differently, um, probably using either smaller graphics or and or fewer graphics, um, rather than try and um, sort of force. The game that I'm making to fit on a um, to fit on a phone, um, which which because I, I just think that's kind of impossible with with what I'm doing. 
But if you are, um, you know, if you are um, going to make a game that you think people are going to look at on their phones, then this uh, will be relevant, um, or, or it will be relevant for a lot of for a lot of phones anyway. That um, if the thing gets too small, the text will will sort of hide behind the um, sidebar, and this will this will stop that happening. So um, I'm sorry that the sidebar, getting rid of the sidebar, um, isn't um, it isn't a very satisfactory solution. Admittedly, um, as I say, there are uh, I have seen people say, "Oh no, no, you do this, and that'll get rid of the sidebar completely." But it doesn't do that, at least on my um, on my computer. So um, I haven't been able to find a way to do that. And what I would recommend is that if you are going to work in SugarCube, um, you might be better to just take it that you're going to have a sidebar and design the game that way. Just think about what, rather than rather than sort of waste it and ignore it, think about what information you can have in there or what graphics you can have in there or something that are, that are going to make sort of good use of having that sidebar. Um, but uh, on the other hand, if you're going to have a permanent sidebar, that's quite easy. It's just a single, um, it's just a single command that gets rid of the button to collapse it. So I hope that is of use or interest to at least some of you. And I hope you will tune in next time.